are in fact joining us from a production of facility in South San Francisco where it looks like there's drones and planes behind you. What are we seeing there? Yeah, uh, I'm standing in Zipline's manufacturing facility, which is in South San Francisco. So behind me, you can see autonomous aircraft coming off the manufacturing line, uh, getting ready to head to you know, places as diverse as Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria, uh, North Carolina, or Arkansas. So you know, we're, we're, as you mentioned, we've really seen the pandemic create a, uh, a, a totally new kind of demand for logistic services, particularly instant logistics. Uh, and so we're trying to keep up with that demand. So give us a 30,000 foot view. How many drones is Zipline flying now? Where are they flying and what are they delivering? So uh, Zipline's, when, when we started in 2016, partnering with the government of Rwanda, we actually initially, you know, our initial service contract was to deliver a wide variety of blood products to 21 different hospitals. Over the last two years, that service has expanded dramatically. Today, we serve about 2,500 hospitals and primary care facilities across Rwanda, Ghana, and the United States. Uh, and then toward the end of this year, we'll also be launching in Nigeria. And we announced last month that Toyota is tapping Zipline to build instant logistics in Japan. So to put, you know, to put that into perspective, I mean, that, that's the largest commercial autonomous system of any kind on earth. A lot of those facilities, hospitals will often order maybe two to five deliveries a day. And so this is a, it's a very new class of logistics for healthcare, where instead of receiving deliveries every month, you can now basically receive what you need, when you need it, in a way that ensures universal access for patients, but also allows healthcare systems to save millions of dollars by centralizing inventory and throwing less stuff out, which is particularly important for precious things like COVID-19 vaccine. Wow. So talk to us about how the pandemic has sort of helped and, ch you know, changed the way your operations have evolved and, and, and responded because um, traditional supply chains really broke down through the pandemic. And now there is a demand and need for vital vaccines and so much more that we didn't have before. Definitely, Emily. I mean, that's what we saw. So uh, I, I think, we, you know, we've depended on traditional logistics for so long. Sometimes I, I think we all... all forget it, the, the ways in which they are fragile. So, you know, good examples. I mean, Zipline was already serving about, I think, 1,500, 2,000 hospitals and primary care, care facilities when the pandemic struck. But one of the quick things that we, that we immediately recognized was we saw demand for traditional vaccines, for example. These are called EPI vaccines, which is traditional childhood vaccination, went up about 10x in the first month of the pandemic as quarantines were put into place. And suddenly, a lot of people weren't showing up to work. A lot of traditional logistics that were moving those vaccines was no longer working. And so over the last 12 months, Zipline has delivered over 2.5 million doses of just traditional vaccine, making sure that countries in the middle of a pandemic can keep doing the essential healthcare work that you have to do to keep people healthy uh, and vaccinated. We also immediately began delivering COVID-19 samples from rural areas uh, to central testing labs to make sure the people who live in those places can get their results in hours rather than weeks. We finally began delivering um, COVID-19 vaccine as soon as it was available, uh, make, ensuring that basically as soon as COVID-19 available vaccine is available in a country, it is available at every primary care facility, no matter how rural or how remote, rather than just being available in urban centers. So this is really the promise of this technology. Wow. It's that we can make logistics work for everybody rather than just people who live in certain zip codes. You forged partnerships with Pfizer, with Toyota, with Walmart all in the last year. Talk to us a little bit about that opportunity ahead to transform the logistics infrastructure, you know, instant delivery, not just for you know, wealthy and, and, and developed countries, but for developing countries that traditionally haven't had access to this. That was really the other half of this transformation that we're seeing as a result of the pandemic. Obviously, a really scary new challenge like this also requires new kinds of technology and new solutions. And so not only did we see the work that Zipline's doing multinationally in Africa really accelerate, but also we've seen some of the biggest, you know, most respected companies in the world U.S. companies starting to take big bets on instant logistics as ways particularly of providing health care and health and wellness products, making sure that we can deliver those things directly to the home. We've seen every health system in the U.S. is basically, I think so many of these health systems thought that 
they had maybe 10 years to affect sort of this digital transformation and caring for people in the home. And now a lot of them are accelerating that and trying to do that in one year. So telepresence is one half of the solution so that people can talk to a doctor. The other half of the solution is instant logistics, making sure that a patient can get the exact thing that they need or the thing that they need for their kid uh, very quickly after that initial visit without needing to leave the home. Now, I remember when Zipline launched Keller and there were a lot of folks out there who thought it would never work. It was before its time. You've had to deal with so many regulatory government issues along the way to get to where you are. Why is it that Jeff Bezos promised an octocopter years ago and that's never happened, but Zipline is here and, and it's big now? For sure, there are a lot of companies, I think, that have you know made big announcements in this space. I mean, we take that as a positive. I think a lot of companies are realizing that instant logistics is it's a huge opportunity. It's going to be a big industry. And the thing that's most important to Zipline is it's an opportunity to build the first logistics system that serves all people equally. Uh, I think a lot of people are realizing that building this kind of technology is definitely harder than we initially expected. But I think the most important thing that Zipline really you know, did differently is that we've taken partnering with governments very, very seriously. We know that you know, when it comes to healthcare, most countries have public health care systems that you need to work closely with. And when it comes to getting national regulatory approval for these kinds of systems in the way that Zipline has, that came through these really amazing partnerships directly with countries, with civil aviation authorities, with ministries of health. Uh, that enabled us to get to the point where we are today, serving about 25 million people. So I think, you know, there's more credit to uh, the governments we partner with than, than, than to us.